Hi everyone, we're back um, and on Common Love. This is Adrian and, and Sean, Sean. Yes. and we're just here to talk about somewhere we, we left off last time. Um, somebody had made a comment about Sean speaking more on the metamorphosis of coming from the beginning of the stand to where a place where God's trying to bring you through the pain and everything. So I'll let him elaborate first a little bit on that and then we can get into things. Yeah, so again, I hope everyone's having a blessed day. But yeah, I made the comment in our last video. And one of the things is when you're going through a change, because one of the other videos we talked about a change of mind, changing your mind. And in that change in the mind aspect, while you're going through that mindset change, you're gonna go through a spiritual change, you're gonna go through a mental change. Uh, and there's a lot of changes that are gonna happen. And with that, that is kind of that metamorphosis stage, that cocoon stage, that every caterpillar, and you all know that before you see something beautiful, you know, there's a messy side that kind of goes along with some different things. Sometimes you find yourself in this cocoon-like state to where you feel isolated, maybe isolated from family, maybe isolated from friends, uh, people that just don't uh, believe like you. They think that yeah, you don't need to do this. You don't need to go through these problems. You don't need to stand still. You don't need to stand strong. All you need, just need to do is just move on. And so you'll find yourself um, sometimes in your house by yourself, driving in a car by yourself, and you feel a little isolated. And that's that cocoon. And uh, what was that cocoon like for you? That's You're going through that cocoon like how, how do you know this is a process or a thing? Oh like, man, could I, could did I, you see, experience any? <clears throat> Or did you feel I was going through something like that? Or well, you know, well, you know, the interesting thing is because even though that I was doing whatever I had, I had a cocoon-like stage that I had to go through even myself even as a prodigal. And so if you're going, if a prodigal has to go, go through a cocoon-like stage, because, you know, there's a time when people are around the prodigal and you're hanging and everything looks great, but secretly, you know, you're isolated because some of the the company you used to keep you can't keep it the way you used to because you know you're going to get treated different because of decisions that they've made and your job is a little bit different because you know depending upon what that looks like now there's a there's a change there you know now you've got brand new surroundings and guess what there's a change there because it's like there's some, you're trying to fit in the places that you are not made to fit in so you'll find yourself in this cocoon like stage even when you're dealing with that so I can only imagine from a standard point of view what that cocoon like stage because now the family that they used to hang around with and the associates and acquaintances that they would hang around with is no longer comfortable to hang around those same acquaintances and associates or even family because things have changed so what was your change like um, from your standards point, I know what mine was like, sure. and it was a, uh, it was weird. It was uncomfortable. It was eerie, because you know you you we put up the front like we're smiling, everything's going great, but you're uncomfortable in different stages of your life. So, well, initially for me, with me not telling anyone or a lot of people, just the few who were already close to me could feel there was something in me not right um, so those people were still there not so much an issue with them but also having that feeling of loneliness because I had I did keep this to myself right um, I wasn't sharing with everyone um, so a lot of times I'm processing what God is saying to me what God is wanting me to do trying to figure out what this looks like like what is standing like, what are you asking me to do, Lord? And literally having no mentorship or anybody that's gone through the process or anybody that would understand it, even the friends that may have known about it, um, they weren't there. That wasn't something they ever experienced. Um, I think at first, because they're like, okay, well, you guys are still married and he may have left, maybe it's just for a moment. So people stick with you around that time still, right? They're like, okay, it'll just pass or something. Yeah, they've been married so long. Um, so maybe this thing will pass. So they're kind of there with you. They check on you every once in a while, of course. They're making sure you're okay. But they don't understand what God is really calling you to do. So that's when it starts to feel lonely, when you start to go, how do I explain this to this person? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is beyond, like, if you don't come back right away. Right. I got to stand. Like, this is beyond if he divorces me, I got to stand. So, um... 
it was it was lonely and it was frightening and it was painful because I literally at certain points I just had God I mean that he would give me some golden nuggets as I call them here and there where certain people would send me a scripture on a certain day not knowing um, those are the things I started to hold on to um, and that phase there was just um, I don't know if I could say loneliness as far as like I can feel God's presence you know what I'm saying but loneliness as far as a lot of times missing you missing the marriage, missing the relationship. So that's usually what's hard to process because the family dynamics change. Um, the living situation has to change. So you're going through those transitional stages mm -hmm. and those things are hurtful, they're painful. You're like, where do I go from here? Where do I go next? What does this look like? So um, that's how the cocoon experience, as you're calling it, started for me. Um, and. As I was alone though, and seeking, God was able to speak to me. And that's where I took my direction. Like for me, when you're in that place day after day, because that's all you have, um, that's all you desire after a while, God's, you're gonna hear God, you're gonna hear him clearly. He's gonna direct you in the faintest of ways, in the loudest of ways. Um, and I found myself experiencing that a lot. And so, I didn't first think I was crazy or anything, you know, I was like, I'm good. Like I have God directing me, I have friends here and there I reach out to, but I didn't want to go anywhere. I really didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to, and in fact, sometimes you just don't want to live life the way you used to. Yeah. Because I know you went through that, even being gone, you expressed it to me. Yeah, you know, and, and in that, in that midst, you know, you try to, um, even in the midst of your crisis and your, uh, even right before you get into that cocoon per se, and you're going through that struggle, you're trying to figure out how can I move, continue to move forward? Not try to rearrange your life, not, not just start over, but in the midst of what I'm going through, how do I continue to move forward? How do I continue to live? How do I continue to smile? How do I continue to continue to, you know, give my best at work? How do I continue to love certain family and certain people when they do decide to call or if I see them in the streets? You know, there's all these different things that you have to manage and go through. And then you get in this cocoon and you're just like, okay. Um, and the reason why there's no cocoon, that there is a cocoon is the simple fact that, like I stated earlier, um, you know, the calls, you're not getting calls that are real, that really care about what's going on. It's usually calls that just want to know about your business. You know, as I started, as I really, uh, alluded to before, you know, they're not there to put out the fire. They're not here, there to help, you know, put it out. They're really there to spread the news about the fire. And, um, and they're not trying to really help you in your journey. They just want to get the news out about what's going on in your journey. And you're going to run into many of those obstacles while you're in this cocoon, which is why it's very imperative that you focus on your vertical relationship with the Lord, no matter where your faith walk is right now. It doesn't matter if um, I just met Jesus yesterday, or maybe it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Guess what? When you come out of this cocoon, that relationship you had with God before you went in it is totally different when you come out uh, on the other side because now you have a different relationship. You know that um, I'm not just reading a scripture and moving on. You know, not only do I am I reading the scripture, the, the the word is actually bringing life to me. There's something that's happening. I know exactly what that means. You know, when the word says this, that, the other, because now in this cocoon-like experience, you are now experiencing the word for yourself. And it's, and it's important that when you're in this cocoon, that you're getting nourishment. And the only way you're going to get that nourishment is if you dive into the word of the Lord and trust it. Start reading encouraging books. And even if you're watching movies, read stuff that's encouraging. Stay away from the naysayer. Stay away from anybody who decides to, yep, I'm going to say it, use you like a trash can. Because you know a lot of times what happens, people come around 
and they and while you're going through they want to tell you all their drama tell you all their dirt and then talk about your own dirt and then when they leave they leave empty and all of a sudden your trash can is overflowing when in actuality the truth of the matter is, is when you're going through you're trying to find a way how do I empty out my trash how do I get how can I be more encouraged how can I be more built up and then what happens is people just come and sometimes come into your life and then sometimes you're gonna run into while you're going through you don't want to talk to nobody the Lord's gonna introduce you to somebody to where you're gonna to have to encourage them in the midst of you going through your own stuff and how has that worked out for you? Oh yeah, so once I, I feel like once I got to the point where God was able to pour so much into me um, and start unraveling because I'm breaking through, right? It's like I know what I'm doing now, I know why I'm standing, I understand it and I plan to do this no matter what. It was like, he was like, okay, well I'm about to use you to encourage other people and I was like, Okay, wait, wait, God. One, wait for my it's husband like, to get I'm back. I'm not even out yet. Like, that's something we're supposed to be in ministry together. And then two, I'm in the midst of it. I'm in the heavy parts of it still. Um, going through, having, you know, negative conversations still or whatever. You're still, you know, pulling away. And it's just like, how can I encourage somebody else? But um, I was like, okay, Lord, with just one person at a time. And... Uh, why like within a couple of days God was like okay here's your one person and I, I was shocked and the way it happened it was just amazing but he in that moment he even set things up just so where that person particularly picked me out and it happened to be a person from work and picked me out to work with that person and I was like out of everyone they picked me you know and so um, I just felt it was weird you know but I didn't understand what God was doing. And lo and behold, me and that interaction with that person led to prayer that, praying over them that morning and um, just them crying out and them actually being at peace. And I realized encouraging somebody else Build and giving them too. hope, mm -hmm. oh my God, I was filled. Mm -hmm. And I was in a different space than I had been before when I started my stand. And then, not only, it wasn't just a one-time meeting, that friend became a very close friend now, my sister, and as I call her, and it just kept elevating and, and increasing, and as I'm pouring into her, um, she begins to also encourage me, and also because of her, what her status was, I was able to see some things through her that helped me understand him. Mm. And that was very like, wow, I didn't expect that. So even in the midst, I'm so glad I was obedient to go, okay, God, I'm going to take these steps and be in faith that even though you're working on my mess, I can be there for somebody else. So, And lo and behold. Correct me. So mm -hmm. what I just heard was because of your obedience mm -hmm. in encouraging someone else, you were able to get encouragement for yourself, but it was through obedience first. Yeah. Because mm. mm -hmm. if that, that connection wouldn't have happened, if when I walked back into the room and met with this person and God said, pray for her, then that wouldn't have happened. I didn't know my prayers were going to cover her and her situation. Mm. If I would have clammed up and been like, okay, this is a work person, this is so inappropriate. But the difference was we were in a private room. We had one-on-one -on -one time for eight hours that day together in a private room, just me and him. So even though we were on the clock per se, God made time. Like it wasn't in, intrusive or in, interruptive to say, you know, cause I know a lot of times it's like we can be, um, you know, working on a job in ministry, right, you know, but to, when that's not what they brought you there right, for. Right, yeah. that's not what they brought us there for. But when he calls us to do it, we have to do it. There's been many times. And the Lord will open the door. Yeah. The Lord will open the door right. when you decide to be obedient. Right, and it didn't have to be this long, drawn-out thing, but we ended up having time over weeks. Mm -hmm. And it would just be in the moments we had to talk. It was just, let's talk, let's work, let's talk, let's work. And then we meet outside of work and we started having dinners and just where I had loneliness too, he brought somebody to me that helped me fill my time because they weren't on a typical schedule, mm -hmm. you know, and I was able to bring um, 
time to her as well and it was it was just really nice it became a really nice um, not even a distraction but a just a blessing mm -hmm. you know I didn't expect to receive um, it didn't take me away from my stand and even this person didn't even understand but it also let me see where I was and where my faith was because I could speak to this person and go hey I know you don't get it but God's gonna show his glory I'm still standing regardless of how you might feel about this. Because she's like, I don't know, girl. I don't know why you, I commend you, but I don't know why you're doing this. And I'm like, just wait, just see. And I had enough in me to speak that faith mm -hmm. and walk it out. So, but that one encounter ended up transpiring to about another eight encounters. And it's interesting how, you know, God just started placing people in my life who are in different seasons of their relationships, mm -hmm. whether they were married, whether they were engaged, whether they divorced their spouse. Um, I had everything, separation. or going yes. through a separation. I had an in-home protocol. I was dealing with every type of situation. And at the end of the day, I knew it was for ministry because now I've touched on every side of a relationship mm -hmm. that could be restored. And the interesting so. thing is, as we just talked about, that was all while still in the cocoon mm -hmm. state. So one of the other things that we're gonna go through real quick is what else happens while you're in this cocoon state? Because again, you're trying to stand for change, you're trying to stand for restoration, you're trying to stand for all these different things. I wanna talk about the one word that I think all of you will understand, and that's called distractions. Oh. Because one thing that the enemy will do. Sometimes he don't. He doesn't. You know, the Bible talks about that. He would to like to sift us as wheat. Okay, and what happens is he really doesn't have to do a lot if he can just cause us to be distracted by the noise, distracted by social media, distracted by what that other person, that other woman, or that other husband's got going on, distracted by what they're posting, distracted by um, the pictures, distracted by what you, uh, he said, she said, girl, did you know, and the guy, did you know I saw her? You know, you have all this stuff going on. Then all of a sudden we start getting distracted and focusing on the other party instead of focusing on the purpose God has for you. Mm -hmm. So as you were going through, what type of, what type of distractions do um, standards actually go through when they're going through their stand, through this metamorphous stage, this cocoon stage? What kind of distractions do you all go up against? Um, people say things out of turn. Mm inappropriate and they don't mean to I think sometimes they just or sometimes they do <laughs> but you go wow I'm in the midst of doing what I'm doing and you know this and mm -hmm. you still are coming for me like you know I'm in a painful period right now um, so you get stuff like that um, things I experienced uh, were all of a sudden you get people approaching you. You got a wedding ring on. That didn't happen when he was by my side before he left. All of a sudden, here comes this dude and that dude. And you're just like, okay, the enemy can get some people like that. I wasn't one of them. I just veered off of that. But um, things like that. Uh, distractions of just chaos happening with the children and everything. Like, my, you know, one daughter got pregnant. Another daughter got pregnant. Um, son, don't know where he's at. You know, there's different things trying to put the last one through high school. So there's so many distractions, they were all competing. And it was just like, okay, you know, trying to get me like, you don't have time to be standing, you need somebody, blah, 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 you know, those kind of things. And it's like, you could easily go, okay, I give up because I have too much going on in my life. But that wasn't the case. I had to go, okay, God, you know what's on my plate. You see what's before me. I'm in my closet and here, I give it to you. You tell me what comes first. You tell me how you're gonna make it work. And sometimes I walk up the closet, literally, and it's done. Like, he's like, he ordered it. And he's like, this is taken care of, this is taken care of, but that takes your faith and believing. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take care of everything. And the other distraction, you get hit hard by the enemy as you're getting closer to busting out the cocoon. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You're on the brink. You're like on the edge and you're wondering why I'm getting attacked. So I started getting attacked and my physical body more. 
as you were on your way home. Um, you know, we talk about um, just going through spiritual warfare a lot more. You just waking up in the middle of the night and you feel like oh, something's happening and I begin to pray. You know, because it's like there's that spiritual struggle on this end. I don't exactly know what he's going through, but I'm getting up out of my sleep because God said, go pray now for him. Who knows what was going to happen that day or in the midst of when I was praying, something could have been going on. So you just start feeling things more or just all of a sudden you out of nowhere, you feel hit like something comes for you Mm -hmm. and you're like, Okay, something you might have seen or you didn't expect to see or somebody brought something to you and you're standing tough and then you're just like, wait, okay, and you're like, you know what, forget it. I just want to give up and you're right there. That's just nothing but the enemy. He's like, let me try one more time, one more last time to figure out, excuse the plan, to figure out how I can make sure this is not successful. You know, and I would... A tribute mine a lot. I would go back and forth in a word about Job and his, you know, stand after all was taken, you know, and he's trying to get encouragement. And then you have these people coming along with doubt, you know, yeah. but then you have one that comes with wisdom. And it's just like, and then suddenly God restored him and everything um, that he had before and then some, right? So it was just him having to wait out though yeah. through all of those different things he had to go through through all those trials yeah and as she spoke about Job, because um, if you notice you know she talked about all the things that was taken away from him but if you go back and further up in that section of verses in scripture you know the bible talks about as one was speaking someone else came in and what was happening is the first one would come in and said hey you just lost and while job is processing that thing of what he just lost another one came in by the way you just lost and then the next person by the way you just so you start dealing with all these different things and you're going to go through things in your life of distractions that you may think are um, you know death and they're not death they're distractions they're to keep you from focusing on the 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 heart, mind, and perfect will of God for your life. And it's just a distraction to keep you off point. Because if instead of turning you completely backwards, instead of turning you completely 90 degrees, if I can just get you 10 degrees off track, if I can just get you 15 degrees off track to look at that thing over there, or to focus on those things, guess what? You'll spend quite a, a couple weeks, a couple months, maybe two years of your life focusing on that 10 degree thing and you never focus on the purpose. And what happens is if we stay focused on the distraction, we stay in our cocoon a lot longer than expected. Because the goal is to always um, focus on the heart, mind, and perfect will of God for your life. And that all that comes through getting into that word, reading encouraging books, you know, getting uh, people in your life, if, if, they, if you do have any at all, you know, because the, the Bible talks about in all that getting, get an understanding. And it also talks about having people around you that give you the right wisdom in order to move forward in your life and whatever that thing is. So I was going to ask you, so you asked about my distractions, but looking back, did you feel you had any distractions in so your cocoon would be coming out to come home, right? Yeah. So did you, and once you realized you wanted to come home, did you have any distractions? Well, the distraction for me is, was first, it was just the situations of what was going on. You just have, you know, because you focus on that. And then you're focusing on um, all the other different things horizontal was going on. And then until, like I said before, until I began to ask God about me and really show me me and what was it I needed to do. You know, as the Bible talks about, you know, what must I do to be saved? Not what must she do and him do and they do. But let's just talk about me. Lord, what must I do? What is it that you need from me? What is it that I need to do? And it's only then that he just began to speak. Now, within that speaking, there was a, there was a requirement upon my life that I needed to do. 
and in the midst of him speaking and telling me what the requirement was, then the first distraction is, how is that going to happen? How are you going to move that? And what about this over here? And what about that over there? And what about if so-and-so says, no, what's that going to look like with this family? And how is that going to look like over here? And then what about you? Are you sure you're going to be able to take the heat? Are you going to, sure you're going to? So there is all, yeah, there is a lot of things. And that's what's going to happen with any product. It doesn't matter if it's a man or woman, whoever it is. When they're finally told that there's a requirement on their life to do something, the distractions then, not only because they're really distractions in the very beginning, but what happens is when God tells you to do something, then it's amplified. It's blown up into being bigger than what it really is. Because you know that when God tells you something to do, and there is a requirement upon you, once you begin to make that step, He opens the doors on completing what it is that needs to be completed. But the problem in that we do, we focus so much so on the distractions, on all the what ifs, what if so-and-so gets mad, what if they decide to tear up stuff, what if this, that, and the other, that we never or we delay taking our step. And we end up in that cocoon for so long. So then once we, when we begin to make that step, we start move, moving forward, and God starts opening up doors, then there's other distractions that come. Well, I don't understand. I don't think you should. And I don't, it's a whole lot of stuff. And you still have to be focused on what God is calling you to do. Because once he call, has called you to do a thing, you are now required. Remember, we're not judged on what we know. I mean, what we don't know. We're judged on what we do know. And when God begins to open up scripture to you, when he begins to open up your eyes as to what you need to do, you are graded, not by me, not by her, but by God. You are graded on what you know and your obedience. And you'll find out when you become obedient to the word of the Lord, when he begins to speak to you and you start making these strides or as the message this morning, start making these big steps, these big leaps to do uh, what he has called you to do, you will find that the Lord will bless and open the door. But what happens is, again, the trick of the enemy is to cause us to be distracted because if we are distracted we won't take the steps we won't take the leaps we won't even try to crawl toward that thing because we're so off track and focusing on the distractions but like I said once you do that give that obedience to the Lord and you take that big step be prepared for those doors to open and when they open they swing open wide yes the enemy's still going to try to buffet you and let you know, oh, that door is open, but you know, there's something behind that door. Are you sure you want to go through it? Yes. Yes. Go through it because your miracle is on the other side of that door. And, and in that miracle, guess what? That's busting out of that cocoon. You know, I don't care if you see a small crack. I don't care if you, if you see a window of opportunity. That light, let me tell you, when you come out on the other end after going through such a hard time, after going through distractions, after going through being talked about, after going through being ridiculed, after uh, hearing, you know, all the naysayers say this, that, and the other, and talking about you in front of your back, yeah. behind your back, and around the corner. Losing people in and, the oh, process. yeah. And then all of a sudden, God does a thing for you, and all of a sudden, the wings are all beautiful and stuff, and you come out on the other side. Let me tell you what. But folks are not going to know what to do because guess what? Because you, because you told them what God's told you and they decide to sever that tie with you because they decided to move on, do their own thing, because they decided to do whatever it is they called to do. Guess what? But because you already told them what God has called to do and you shown them what the scripture says and all that, guess what? And they see you come out, then they're not going to know what to do because now they are now accountable to now what they know. Because you've shown them God in your life. And people forget God is still here to do miracles. He has never mm -hmm. stopped performing them. So why would we not be a case for a miracle? Mm -hmm. Why right. People ask, why do I have to stand? It doesn't make sense. You know, I, I don't understand. I can't do this. God wouldn't give me something I can handle. Oh, yes, he will. He just equipped you to handle it. Exactly. So it's exactly. like this is what God is telling you. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's so much in it. 
And when I remember the moment when I felt like I had my busting out moment, like I'm just like, I'm flying free, mm -hmm. basically. And it lined up with the birth of our grandson that you guys saw on camera um, a few years ago. And as it was really metaphoric because we talked about the cocoon process, but God was showing me a birthing process, mm -hmm. which is basically similar, right? Coming through the canal yeah, and everything. Push it in, yeah. And so I know I had a lot of pain and struggle and distractions during that time, even as she's pregnant, right? And so it's almost like I'm going through spiritual birth as she's going through her journey of right. actually giving birth. So it was funny, it was something about that date too. And it was like, God gives me numbers and numbers always meant a lot um, in my stand and in my walk. And it happened to be the date he was uh, supposed to be born was a common date for me that God always showed me. And I was like, wow, wait a minute. She had gotten a written date of birth because um, they were gonna take him from her, like induce her labor. And so they told her to come in at 8 p.m. that night. And then, um, but she went into labor at six something that morning. So we actually checked her in to labor and delivery at 8 a.m. on the dot that day, new beginnings, right? number eight and so that was like okay Lord what are you about to do you are about to show up and show out and then the um, midwife who was helping us or whatever and she's like yeah sweetie get comfortable you won't give birth for like 72 48 to 72 hours your first time mom so she thought so she thought so my daughter looks at me mom like why and so she's like, um, what do you, the lady's like, okay, what are you guys talking about? She's like, well, I was like, well, I had my first in four hours. And she's like, oh, that's rare. You're rare. It's not going to happen. That boy came <laughs> within five hours mm -hmm. on that date that God said is the day he's going to be born. And it all happened naturally. And he came and he was healthy. They thought he was gonna have health issues because he was supposed to be only like four pounds and early and everything. He was perfect. Yeah. And as I walked through the threshold after her giving birth, after her laboring, after her going through what she went through, um, it was a metaphor for what God was showing me. He was saying, okay, you have birthed this thing. You're done. And as I walked out the hospital that evening, he said, it is finished. He said, you're done. He said, rest. And that took that as like, wow. Okay, Lord, it just released me in such a way. And I just felt like I, my cocoon was broken. As if I now have delivered and now the blessing is here. And then shortly after that, things did start to flow in a way where um, the contact was more frequent. And yeah. things showed up differently for us than they did um before and God just really started working on him and that was the change that I didn't know was happening as I gave birth that's what was released and before you knew it you know you were coming home yeah, and and that's one of the biggest things is understanding that the cocoon the cocoon experience is necessary it is necessary for each individual person because um, when the the prodigal can't come back a caterpillar to the butterfly. And the, the prodigal can't be a butterfly coming back home to a caterpillar. You have to have two butterflies that have gone through a tumultuous process, who have gone through a healing process, who've gone through naysayers, who've gone through people being, talk, being talked about, being kind of left alone. And when you come back as two butterflies attempting to be right back to each other, you get along so well because the the butter the butterfly, both butterflies can talk can talk about the cocoon experiences. But the last thing you want is a butterfly trying to welcome home a cocoon, bringing back a whole lot of problems. So you, everyone needs to be healed, completely made whole, and brought back together, you know, together so they they can build. Not that you're gonna have problems, because in all because in all honesty, it's not over when the prodigal comes home. Oh yeah, because let me tell you, that's when the building really begins. Because you've built separately, you've healed separately, and then now coming home, you're healing together.
you're restoring some different things because now you don't want to go back to, you know, the same person you used to be or she doesn't want to be the person she used to be anymore. And you want to do things different. So in this case, with all that being said, everyone has to work out, as the Bible says, their own soul salvation. And the only way you can do that is seeking God for yourself, getting into some different things, you know, and getting those the, the proper people or the, the like-minded people uh, around you in order to keep you encouraged while you're going through. But with also the understanding, knowing that you're going to have those experiences where you're not getting those phone calls. No one's coming by to check on you. And it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and the Lord. And then when you get in that place, you figure out he's enough. Yeah. It's so good. It is so good. He is enough. He is enough to be a counselor. He's enough to be your husband or your, well, he always says the husband. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's enough to be your husband when he's gone. He's enough um, to cover you as a father, you know, so he's enough. He really is enough. And if we give him an opportunity to do those things instead of going, okay, God, what am I going to do? Panic. And then we go do something we don't have no business doing. We don't find out how much is he enough. Sometimes you have to trust him to the last minute yeah. of that hour. Yeah. You go, oh my God, how is this going to work out? 59. <laughs> I had so much of that, even dealing with the kids, two kids in college. Like, okay, how am I going to pay for this by myself? But he's enough that he worked that out to the last minute. And I'm like, I can't stress about it. It's either going to be or he has another plan. Mm -hmm. So it would come down to things like that. But um, he was just so much enough. It was it was amazing. And even though sometimes he would show me, he goes, he may not come home 100%. You know, he may come home 80%. He may come home 20%. But still, I was prepared. I was ready. And when he brought him home is when he needed to come home. But gratefully, you didn't come home. You came home broken. Mm -hmm. But still, you came home humble enough yeah. to receive. And when we talk about being free and you being complete, I think the completeness was the fact that you were restored back to Christ in a way because of your repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, all the other stuff like you talked about has to be worked on. Yeah. And, but that's okay because God's like, I'm bringing that back so we can work on this. You both are in a repentant, humble state where I can actually speak to you. I can actually deal with you. I can actually know that you have love in your hearts and you're loving me, that you're going to listen and heed and come together to do those things. So it's just a beautiful thing all in all. Um, there's so much beauty in the pain. And I used to say that all the time there is. There's so much beauty in the pain. And we don't realize it until we allow God to just, hey, I completely surrender. Have it all, Lord. Have it all. So. Yeah, and in what she just said is dealing with that humility. But humility only comes through what is called repentance. And true repent, repentance brings about complete humility. It causes us to be very, very humble when you have a truly repented heart. It doesn't matter if you're the standard or the prodigal. Because even as a standard, you could have done some things because you know, as, you know it, takes two, it takes two, right? It takes two. And it's not always the prodigal's fault. And it's not always the standard's fault. Each person has, has had a part to play in either the dissolve or the issues or the problems. And we each have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I repent for not listening to him or her. I repent for being angry. I re repent for being having such a fast mouth. I repent for being so cold. I repent for not giving her or him enough love. Or, be or being soft, yeah, <laughs> you know, or just, you know, some of us can be very, as she just said, very ornery, you know, don't want to listen to nobody, we got our own mind, and we're just, we're not going to change our minds, we're just mm -hmm. stubborn, mm -hmm. and when we are truly repentant, it brings back humility, and when, whether it's the, the standard coming home, because that person, he or she was angry for God knows how, how long, or maybe the standard, um, you know, stepped out, or had another conversation or whatever the case may be but when each person is completely repented that brings about that brings about complete humility because now you no longer want to be the person that you used to be and that only comes through that whole cocoon like experience 
And everyone has to go through that because when you come out on the other side, you want to be different than when you went in completely. You want to talk different. You want to love different. You want to entreat different. You even want to serve different because some people, we're, we're, we, don't, we don't believe in serving people. They serve us, you know, and, and that's not the way to think, but that's how some people think. But when you come out on the other side, guess what? Serving is very important. Whether you're serving your man or you're uh, serving your wife, doesn't matter. You know, service is very important. And that all stuff comes through humility, complete yeah. repentance. And I love to serve you now. Uh, like, yeah, it doesn't bother me. And it makes me happy and actually brings joy to my heart. And you appreciate it now. I do. And you want to serve back too, right? I sure do. I sure do. Yes, I so do. So you do. So mm-hmm. good. You can wash my car when we get home. Though. <laughs> In the heat. But anyways, yeah, that's going to the car wash. <laughs> but yeah, let's close out and just pray with our people. And we love you guys. You know, we really want the best for you. We don't want people to give up. It's, yeah. it's so worth it. I keep saying that. I just can't express it enough. I know you guys battling and you battle with the different things and just listen to God at the end of the day. Get with God. If God says, yeah, you might have started this divorce, but right now I want you to drop it. You got to be obedient. Yep. If we're not obedient, we're going to cause things that don't need to be caused. We're going to go into avenues and places and off the path we don't need to go. The, the goal here in the stand is to stay on the path, mm-hmm. even with everything that's coming at us. How resilient can we be? We can be with God. Yes. Period. I with can do him all only things through Christ, yeah. which strengthens me. Amen. That means you and you and me. It's so possible. You can do all things. You know, the Bible talks about also weeping may endure for a night. We don't know how long the night is, but we all have our night seasons. But the end of that says, but joy comes in the morning. So, so if you have a bad day, right? Mm-hmm. It seems like the worst day from hell. Mm-hmm. Just know tomorrow you can wake up and it's a brand new day. Yeah. Sometimes my stand was literally day by day. And I would say that I go, today is what this day was. But I'm hopeful for tomorrow and what tomorrow's going to bring for that. Because sometimes what it does seem impossible, but that's when God steps in. He's like, I am the God of the impossible, mm-hmm. period. So we have to look to him. Yeah, so just continue to stay strong, continue to keep your faith, stay encouraged in everything that you're going through, because this is not a death sentence. No. This is for the making of you. And it will bring life. Yes, it will, because here's, at the end, at the end of it, as I think about it even now while I'm talking about that, who would have thought that we go through what we have gone through and we still talk about it? And know that we're going to be end up doing this for you. So it was the making for us, for you. So it wasn't just about us. It was us for you. And it's going to be you for someone else. Yes. It might be thousands, thousands. of other of other Millions. people because we're going to meet, reach a certain uh, amount of people, and God's going to open up the doors for you all to reach a certain amount of people to continue encouraging blessing and building these people up while they're going through their processes. They're not going to all be the same, but the point of it is we're here to build and encourage, not tear down, but build and encourage. Yeah. We yeah. live this life for him. Yes, we do. Um, at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. I was like, this isn't my life. You gave it to me. You exactly. put me here on earth for a purpose. Mm-hmm. Let me live my purpose. Yes. He said, then you need to be obedient to me. You need to follow me because outside of him, there was going to be nothing. I knew that much. Outside of Christ, there is nothing better. Mm-hmm. There is nothing better. out. There's no man I could have got better. There's no amount of more children I could have had better. There was no job that could have been better. But in him, he makes it all well. He's like, you follow me. He's like, I have a plan for you that lines up with what I want to do for your life. It's in him I move and have my being. It's all through him. 
Yes. And all your successes is all through him. It's not your it's not your GPA, summa cum laude, it's not your graduation status and all your gr- degrees because it was him that allowed you to have the giftings and talents that you have. So there's so much stuff down inside of you that you just need to tap into and sow into. And when you begin to sow into the giftings and talents that God has given you, Oh my God, and turn those things over to him, turn your life over to him, turn your troubles over to him, turn your marriage, your children, your job, anything that you plan on doing, just turn it over and and give it to him. Let me tell you, you'll come out on the other side as pure gold. And I know a lot of you are young and you're like, I still have so much life in me and I want to do this and I want to do that. Yes, we're in this world, but there comes a time we have to pull out from it and go, okay, God, I'm serious about who you are. There will be time I trust, trust me. We were just at the peak of like, oh, the kids are getting grown. Now we can go do us, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, I felt like that was stripped from me. Like, are you kidding me? Like, we, we now we got some finances. We can go here. We could do this. We can do that. And you want to pull out at that time? And it was just like, you got to be kidding me. I'm still young. I'm still looking good for you. So, hey, let's do this now. I can still walk. I'm still able. I still want to go out and have a good time and schmooze and do all those things. And it wasn't the time. God was like, it's the time for me and you right now. And guess what? It was like time was never taken, I promise you guys. It was like time was never taken. Everything that came back around, it he like doubled that. Mm-hmm. Somehow, that's just who God is. And so we've been able, even in the midst of COVID, we were able to have those moments I wanted. And it was like nothing was ever stolen from me. So everything you think is stolen, it's a trick of the enemy. That's not who our God is. That's mm-hmm. not how he operates. Right. He pays back recompense. Yes, he does. Understand? And so don't act like it's the end of the world, like you're not going to have a full life. Like if you go through this stand and this experience, you will. You still will come back on top. That's because that's who our God is. And not only will you see his glory, everybody around you will see his glory. Yes, they will. And see the victory in everything that has been won because of what you have done, because of your obedience. And And my last scripture for you, it says, be not conformed to this world but be transformed Transformed. by the renewing of your mind. Transform. So your prayer today should be, Lord, transform me. Transform me. There you go. Like a butterfly. All right? So we're just going to close out in prayer. Go ahead. Yeah, Father God, we just thank you, God, for what you do in our lives. We thank you, God, that you have a way to speak to us that we can understand who you are, Father God. And we ask for these transformations to take place. People don't give up on the transformations and die in the cocoon, Father God, that they see it through, Father God, that become free into being a butterfly, being into flying, Father, being into giving birth, Father God. It's a process, Father God, and it's a painful process, but Father God, we know when even when we give birth, we give birth to something beautiful. We give birth to life, Father God. And that's the victory on the other end. So we strengthen these standards, Father God, to believe beyond what they see, beyond what they hear, Father God. And so we just magnify your name. We give you everything, Father God. Let there be full surrenderance in our stand, God, that we have no doubt, but we have freedom to believe. We have freedom to faith this thing through. Hallelujah, Father God. And we find victory in holy boldness, Father God, as we speak your word of what we're going through, Father God. We know you're here for us, Father God, and only you matter. Only you matter in this season of their lives, Father God. We love our loved ones, God, but you matter, Father God. We love you more. And we know through you, Christ Jesus, there is victory. We know through you, Christ Jesus, we will see the other side of this thing, oh God. So strengthen them in their minds, in their hearts, and in their spirits today, Father God, that they proclaim everything that you have and everything that you want to do, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. Amen. Final thought. Lord, transform. I'm Sean. This is Adrian. We're on Common Love. Stay tuned. Till next day. And as always, be blessed. Bye for